Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. What we're doing today is how to install a mosquito net. Um, I've already finished um, all of the bungalow, as you guys can see. Um, let me get a better angle here. All right. As you guys can see, I already installed it all around, all around, except um, I left the door. This is bungalow number two. Uh, I left the door so I could kind of give you guys a quick, quick glimpse of how such things are done. So we got um, nails, well actually they're little like, they're called tachuelas here, little little tachuelitas, they kind of look like that. They got big heads, little bodies, big heads, little bodies, kind of like me. Um, so we get a few of those. You want to get yourself a hammer. A good one or two pound one. And and like so. Uh, what I normally do is I get the corners in first. That way, that way it's gonna stay up, up and put for me. Um, that way I can then just concentrate on um, filling them in. So yeah, basically I'm gonna stretch it out and just do all the four corners first, like. Chicago's four corner hustlers So yeah, we're gonna do the four corners So that's two right there. Um, do a second one here. Just because I screwed up a little bit, but that's all right. All right, so now we're back, back at it, back at it. So we got two corners done so far. That's three, and, and, this here is going to be four. Oh, 
Friday, yo. So this here is four. Okay, you want to make sure it's uh. At this stage, what you want to make sure is that you don't stretch it out too tight around the corners because what you'll do is then you'll you won't have any any um any give. Uh, when you're doing the sides so at the moment you want to leave it a little bit loose and now as I'm going to be um, nailing in the the, um, the sides uh, basically that's what I'm gonna have I'm gonna tug a little bit and stretch it over kind of tug and stretch over that way um, that way it's nice and snug, but also it's not too snug because the the previous set of uh, mosquito nets I had, um, they were stretched so tight. Um, I remember um, there was like uh, there was an incident with with a uh, with a screwdriver uh, where accidentally um, somebody poked poked uh, one of my nets with the screwdriver. And the whole thing just went poof. It just popped, you know, because it was it was at such a it was at such a such a um you know such a high sort of stretch pressure ratio, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure about the, uh, the 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 technical terms, but um, yeah, I remember it. It just it, you could significantly see uh, that. Um, that it was it was it was stretched quite a bit, you know. So so uh, what I learned to do now is basically you kind of do it at a at a medium stretch uh, when you're doing the corners, and then a sort of a semi semi high stretch uh, when you're nailing in the sides. And that way that way everything is is nice and even, and also uh, it's also not too crazy because what you want to mainly do. Uh, the name of the game is basically um, you want to secure the perimeter. You know, you don't want to sort of go too crazy. Um, but yeah, you, all you want to do, you don't want to, you know, stretch it all crazy. Uh, it's just about securing the perimeter. That way, uh, you know, no no bugs or flies come in. Uh, but we're, we're not too bad here. You know, I mean, as you guys can see, I've got the door open. It's, I guess it's a, it's a seasonal thing. It might be. I mean, there's maybe like one month where we get like a lot of bugs coming in. Um, but what I one one of the things I I had done was I studied um, I studied mosquitoes, uh, studied their behavior uh, throughout the months, throughout the years. And basically what I've done is I've sort of eliminated a lot of their breeding nests around my lodge here. So we, you know, we don't get like, like I remember, you know, four or five years ago when I first got here, um, you know, mosquitoes were pretty bad. I mean, you always had to, you know, light up citronella candles and, you know, you had to light up. Uh, all, all sorts, you know, and 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 really, really, really be like they were they were quite aggressive. Um, but now what I've done is I've um, I've in initiated a few uh, things where, yeah, I, I I went around and I looked for for a lot of their breeding nests. So you know, certain trees will attract um, uh, will attract mosquitoes, and likewise. In my pond here, because many people, you know, many people wonder, like, hey, you know, you're you're living right on top, pretty much right on top of a pond, and yes, as most uh, South American cities um, were were uh, uh, were sort of uh, originally designed by civil uh, by Spanish colonial civil engineers. Was was always uh, like a similar similar uh, like matter. Um, most big cities in South America, especially like uh, out around the the jungle areas, were basically lakes 
that were drilled, drained, and then cities were were built uh, on top of them. Um, very rare cities, like like um, like for example, Iquitos, uh, very rarely. Uh, were they done this way, where sand was brought in from like Egypt, and then that sand uh, from the Sahara and stuff, um, uh, like Western Sahara and Morocco and you know the areas, uh, that sand was just you know pounded on top of uh, on top of uh, existing uh, existing ge uh, geological sediments. And then it became it's sort of like you know uh, an a, a, an island city was was created, but most cities you know um, that's why a lot of big cities in South America have a, have a bad mosquito problem um, because you know those lakes underneath that all that cement are still living and breathing as 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 they were for you know sixty five six point five billion uh, year years uh, so. Um, with that said, basically, yeah, I have a pond in here, but I noticed around the around the perimeter of the pond, there used to be a lot of uh, mosquito nests breeding in the, in the water. There were there were certain plants, uh, and they're they're still there. But what I had done was I I had uh, I had purchased uh, one thousand five hundred uh, uh, of a fish called Boca Chico. And basically, out here in the in the Amazon, Boca Chicos are kind of. I think they're in like the carp family. I'm not. I'm not sure. I got. I gotta research it more. But basically, Boca Chico, um, is a an insect eating uh, fish, and they love to eat on um, mosquito uh, nests. For example, like the ones that form in the little water plants all around the perimeter of my lake. Or my pond, I should say. And basically, so what I had done was I, I purchased uh, 1,500 of these little fishies. And once I released them into my pond, after about a year, I mean, I noticed a significant difference. Um, a significant difference in the amount of mosquitoes that I had around here. Uh, because, you know, the mosquitoes, like, the, uh, well, the fish ate out mo all, all the... Um, all the nests and they continue eating them so they're they don't really bring br uh, breed around my pond anymore and like for example you know four years ago I couldn't walk around like this out here I, I could not walk around like this because I'd be I'd be getting bit up you know I'd be getting I'd be getting bit up and um, and now you know you can pretty much I got my hammock right there you know you can you can pretty much stay um, you can pretty much stay outside as you know as long as you want uh you know uh, it, like maybe at like five six o'clock when it starts to get dark maybe at that time um you know when the jungle becomes alive uh, a little bit you know like the mosquitoes will start coming out but like you know when when it's a beautiful sunny day which is pretty much every day um, you know, when it's, when it's, when it's out it's nice and sunny and stuff, you don't have to worry now. Um, and, and, and so, um, so yeah, so basically mosquitoes, mosquitoes are about, but if you, if you sort of treat them accordingly, so, you, you know, you, you're going to get, you know, you're going to mess with nature a little bit, uh, but, you know, mosquitoes, Realistically, um, you know they're, uh, they're they're I guess they serve a purpose in, in in the ecosystem, but you know for us humans they're just they're just a nuisance. Um, and then of course flies, flies and bees and stuff. There's you know loads of flies and bees, but one of the things I had you know I had noticed when I first got here. And the uh, the previous o owner of the land, he basically just had this whole thing. Um, uh, he just basically had the whole uh, land that I'm on just as sort of fruit growing uh, operation, you know, fruit growing plantation. I mean, I still have sort of like 22, 23, 
24 varieties of fruit growing uh, uh, here on my patch. But he just had a little house out by uh, out by the front by the river, and yeah, he just mainly grew grew plants. So he didn't uh, fruits. So he didn't really you know mess too much uh, with flies and things like that because he you know he'd come here once or twice a week. Um, cut down some of his fruits, go back to the city and sell them and stuff. So basically, um, I, I've, what I've noticed, but the local mestizo people, they, uh, as well as, well, not so much the indigenous, but the mestizo people, the, the, my neighbors here in the village, you know, anytime they see a spider or spider web, they kill it, they destroy the spider web. They kill the spider, they destroy, they destroy the spider web. And you know what? Like for me, that's like that's messing with the ecosystem, but in a bad way because spiders are good actually. Like for example, for the last three years, I've left all the webs um, out. I don't clean any of them. I got spiders an inch, two inches from me. Uh, you know, any any time uh, I'm, I'm I'm outside. And I've also noticed with that, because there's so many nets everywhere, so many spider uh, spider webs, I don't get the flies that I used to get three or four years ago. Because, of course, if the you know if there's like five thousand spider webs all around me, then there there are greater chances that the, the flies will get caught in them. So actually, like I remember before, see, like look at this spider here. He just sits there all day. I don't know if you guys can see him, but... See, he just sits there all day. But all along the bridges here, you know, I got loads, loads of nets. You know, you just kind of learn not to walk into their territory. And, they, and, and you know, I have a... I, like, they, they don't walk into your territory. And spiders are actually, uh, actually really, really, really good because, yeah, I mean, like, I remember four years ago sitting outside, I'd be, you know, I'd be smacking flies up and down every, 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 every day. Like, you know, you sit out for like 10 minutes and all of a sudden, you, you, you know, you're just like smacking flies and there's flies coming into your face. Look at now, nothing. Right now, you can sit out all day long and there are, you know, there might be a fly or two here or there, but not like not like people imagine that, you know, the Amazon jungle is just bugs and flies all day long. It's not. It's like this. It's lovely. If you know what you're doing, because, yeah, the spiders are, are um, um, uh, uh, you know, human's friend. Um, and I just leave them alone. I just let them I just let them put up net uh, webs wherever they want to. And... I've noticed this, you know, I, I mean, a drastic difference, uh, drastic difference um, in the amount of flies and bugs I've, you know, I've sort of experienced. So there's that. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hasta la ciao, ciao. Bye for now from the Amazon.